as some of you might have seen, I finally, finally got my Steam Deck. I picked up the mid-range 255 gig model, which cost me $659 Canadian. Today, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and I'll share my first experience of the portable console. I'm also gonna give you a few tips. This is the box it comes in, no real artwork on the box. It's pretty bland and just a battery warning symbol on the bottom. As soon as you open it up, the content begins. Right on top is the quick start card basically says attention make sure you plug in the unit before you power it on and start the initial setup some useful buttons are highlighted here the steam button on the left options button on right and in which position to install a sd card to the left is a box with the power symbol on it and in it of course is the power adapter for charging the steam deck it's just a regular universal usb-c charger there's also a health safety maintenance warning and agreement manual sort of thing in here. Now here's the good stuff. Because I did order the 254 gig, they included a carrying case. It's a pretty sturdy case, one of the main reasons to spend the extra money on a 254 gigabyte. Inside is of course the Steam Deck, but to get to that you gotta break the seal. This is a physical plastic seal they actually put on this case. It's a great way to know if the unit you received is in fact brand new. This moment I was super excited. The last time I've been this excited is probably when I got my PS5. Ladies and gentlemen, my very own Steam Deck. Wow, this thing is pretty huge and that's coming from a Nintendo Switch owner. The build quality though, it feels solid and premium just by the first touch. It's got the traditional D-pad, the Xbox controller setup labels on all the buttons in the front. There's also two touch pads right here, the left and right trigger buttons. There's even trigger buttons on the bottom here. That's very cool. There's the volume control button on the top, audio jack and the power button, somewhat similar to what you see on the Nintendo Switch. I definitely wanna protect this little beast when I travel, so I'm pretty glad I got the case. Before doing the initial setup, I actually fully charged my unit. There is an indicator light that turns on when it is plugged in. Now that it's fully charged, let's set up my Steam Deck. Select the language, select your time zone, set up your Wi-Fi. You can't really do anything without an internet connection on this thing. Looks like it's installing updates at this point, which will take a few minutes. Once the updates are done, you can sign into your Steam account or create a new one if you're new to Steam. And that's pretty much it you're ready to play games from your Steam library. Games that are compatible with the Steam Deck have this green check mark on them. Pretty much all the big AAA games have that check mark. This thing can run everything. If you don't own any games, there's also a few free games you can choose from, the biggest of which is probably Apex Legends, and that runs at high graphics and 60 FPS, and Apex does look crisp on this small screen, as you can see. The 254 gig storage on this, it gets filled up pretty quickly. So I did pick up this 512 gig SanDisk Ultra SD card. This is probably the best value card for the Steam Deck. Install it on the bottom here. The Steam Deck does recognize it, but you do need to format the SD card by going into the settings menu right here for it to be usable. That'll actually take a few minutes. Once done, it's visible under storage and you can start using it to install and play all your games. By default, the console starts in Steam mode and that's pretty much a refined console-like experience. You got the Steam button here, gives you access to a lot of different things. Think of this as the PlayStation or the dashboard button on Xbox. This button on the right is like the home button on your Nintendo Switch. It'll let you adjust a number of settings like the brightness, sound, wireless signal. You can even select which performance overlays you want displayed on the screen. Performance adjustments can also be made here. For example, you can limit the refresh rate of the screen. So far, I'm really enjoying all the features of the Steam Deck. The way they put together this console-like interface is really cool. Now, for those of you that like to mess around with your device, there's desktop mode. You hold down the power button to bring up this menu and then select switch to desktop mode. Now it's essentially like a PC running Steam's own Linux-based operating system. You can also connect the Steam Deck to a larger display or TV, but there is no official dock that's released yet that might come in later. 
For the time being, though, there are some third party docks and devices that are available. A lot of the same devices that work on like a Nintendo Switch or even a lot of the laptops and Samsung phones are pretty much compatible with the Steam Deck's USB-C output. So that's it for today's video. Hope that was helpful. If you just received your Steam Deck or maybe you're waiting on one and want to just see how the experience is of opening one and setting it up for the first time. 